if you have a blanket, you will roll it up. If you don't have a blanket, you'll think as if you had a blanket. And so you'll take it, you know, open it up one way like this, and then roll the long edge. And you're going to take that long edge and lie down on it. So I bring the blanket right up into the uh, buttocks, right? So I'm sitting on the floor, but then the, the blanket will come right to the sacrum. And then I lie down. And I can lift my head up a little bit, fold the blanket under to make a little rest for my neck so it fills in the curvature of my neck before placing my head back down. Then your arms can come out to the sides, knees can be bent or straight, and you'll rest here in this uplifted Shavasana. And so the blanket helps to give you a little bit of feedback as to the curvature of the spine. So you can feel how the sacrum pushes way down onto the blanket. And then the curvature of the lower back moves into the body. And then the thoracic spine again feels heavy against the blanket. The blanket lifts up into the curvature of your neck, of your cervical spine. And then the back of the head rests heavy against the blanket as well. And so we start to really perceive that the spine isn't, right, it isn't a rod. For most cases, it isn't a rod, right? And so when we elongate or lengthen the spine, we aren't necessarily asking for the spine to be straight, right? What does it mean to have a straight spine if we don't want a straight spine? But rather to create length in the curvature that we do have. And so here, if you feel like you can get a little bit longer, what would that feel like? Okay, so the tail moving away from that bottom edge of the blanket and the top of the head reaching towards the back of the blanket. And there might not be a lot of movement, but still you can perceive that those S-like curves of your spine are finding some traction as you try to get longer in the body. And then any effort that you're using, soften that effort whether it be in the legs or in the arms or the spine itself. And separate the backs of your teeth, releasing your jaw. And let your breath be soft. As you find its natural cadence, observing that cadence every breath you take. And so recently I've been diving back into the study of yoga philosophy and there are these qualities that give life life. And so they're called rajas, tamas, and sattva. And I'm fascinated by them because once you learn about them, you see these qualities all the time. And so tamas is a quality that's dull, it's heavy, it's inactive, inertia. And then rajas is very active, right? It's spicy, it's passion, it's desire. And then sattva is sort of this balance. And it's not necessarily a balance between the two previous qualities, but almost like the absence of them. And so it's a sense of peace, a sense of harmony with everything that's going on. And then we're constantly moving throughout these qualities. 
And so certainly, like a day like today, or in the summer in general, it's very rajasic. It's very active. There's a lot going on. But that there can be so much activity, there can be so much heat, that it tends to have the opposite result, right? That we get tired, like I told you about my nap today, right? And then it becomes dull, listless. And so how do we find sort of this sattvic um, balance? And so probably the answer would be, you know, turn the television, don't turn the television on, turn the air conditioner on, right? And then go out for your day. But we see those same qualities certainly in our yoga practice. There are those times where we're forcing, we really want to get into a position, we really want to reach for whatever we think we should be reaching for. We can also feel tamasic, where it's kind of like, yeah, yeah, okay. Probably we're not even at class if we're in that tamasic phase. But, you know, it's just there isn't this attitude of, of willingness. And then something to be able to move through your practice where it can be challenging, but it doesn't necessarily mean that we're forcing it, that it has to be a certain way, but we're rather able to feel at one, feel at peace as we move in our body. So as you practice today, notice the conditions surrounding it. So they may be ideal, they may not be ideal. Notice what qualities come up and how those qualities affect your movement. And so if you find that you become very impassioned, can you cultivate the opposite? And then on your next in-breath, and bend your knees if the knees aren't bent already. Take your arms overhead. But as you bring your arms overhead, notice if the spine moves in any way, right? Do, does the breastbone lift up? Do the ribs lift up? Is there a little higher arch in the lower back? Okay. And then bring the arms down again by your sides. And notice the natural curves. Try to maintain the natural curves, maybe create some length between them, but not to forcibly lift the ribs away from the blanket. Lift the arms overhead. Okay. And then from there, turn the backs of your hands so they face down towards the floor, palms face up towards the ceiling. Then bend the elbows, kind of like cactus arms. But pull the elbows as far down towards your side waist as possible. And then sweep the arms back overhead, like Urdhva Hastasana. Ribs down. And then bend the elbows. Pull the elbows down towards your side body. And one more time, reach the arms overhead. And back down. Good. The next time the arms come back down, you'll roll over to one side. You remove your blanket, move that aside. And then come back onto your back for a moment. And then observe. So now we don't have the blanket to fill the curvature of the spine, but perhaps you can feel the space between the lower back and the mat, the space between the neck and the mat, whereas you can feel the other, the other curvatures pressing down, so the hips pressing down, sacral, sacrum pressing down, the thoracic spine pressing down, Head pressing down, if you include it. And feel the breath without the support underneath the spine. Is there a different quality to your breath? Does it feel heavier or lighter? Easier or harder, perhaps? And bend your left knee towards your chest. Wrap your hands beneath your left thigh. Straighten your right leg. And then proceed to straighten the left leg for Sutta Padangusthasana 1. And point the, the left toes. 
keep the left toes pointed. If the foot cramps, right, start to flex, you might actually have to bend the knee and help to flex the foot to release that cramp. But otherwise, keep the foot pointed so that the top of the foot gets pretty long. And then hold on to the back of the left leg, keep the toes pointed, reach the left leg out to the left. Can you press your big toe away from your inner ankle so that the inner foot is long? And inhale back your center, bend your left knee, place your left foot down, slide it forward. Switch sides, bend your left knee, Loop the hands beneath the right thigh, reach the right heel up towards the ceiling, and then point the right toes. And notice the effect that it has as you pull the toes away from the shin. So you may feel sensation along the front of the right shin, as well as the top of the foot. And hold on to the leg with the right hand. Keep pointing the toes as you take the right leg out to the right. And move your right big toe in the direction of your little toe. So that the inner foot gets longer. And then inhale. Bring the left leg, the right leg back to center. Bend the knee. Place your foot on the floor. Left foot on the floor, roll to one side, and then using your hands, press yourself up onto all fours for tabletop. Open up your hands about, shoulder width apart, knees about hip width apart, and point your feet, right? Point your toes. And if you find that the tops of the feet lift away from the floor, then perhaps this would be a time where you can pad. Okay, use the blanket so that you can press the tops of the feet into something. Okay. As you inhale, lift the chest forward and up into cow. Exhale, push down, round the spine into cat. You can continue to do that a few times into cow and cat. As you undulate your spine, can you feel each part of the spine moving and articulating? Or does it feel like the whole spine moves together at once? Do you notice a part of your spine that's a little resistant to a certain type of movement? As you inhale, return to center. Sit the hips halfway back. Walk your hands over to the right about 45 degrees. And then reach the hips all the way back and down towards your heels. Lower your forehead down. Breathe along the left side ribs. So that with every in-breath, you can feel that there's space moving through each set of ribs. Inhale, walk yourself back through center into tabletop. Sit halfway back. Walk your hands over to the left, 45 degrees. Pull the buttocks back and down as you lower your forehead down. Breathe along the right side of your body. Inhale, walk yourself back through center. Okay, we're gonna make our way down onto the mat. But again, if the feet come away from the floor a lot when you do your low cobra, consider using your blanket roll here too. Okay, so you don't have to, but if it's helpful to get that press of the feet down into the floor, and it doesn't usually happen, try lifting the height of the floor through the use of the blanket. So, 
Okay, take your hands by the sides of the shoulder, elbows point back, press into the hands, and as you inhale, curl the spine up like you would in cow pose. And then as you exhale, lower yourself back down. Press down through the feet, inhale, roll yourself up. And exhale back down. And the next time you roll yourself up, lift up. See if you can slide your forearms forward and come into space. Press the forearms down as you reach the chest forward and up. And then really press the tops of the feet down into the floor as you turn your inner thighs up towards the sky. So there may be this sense of width across your lower back. On an exhalation, lower the chest back down. Take your arms down by your sides. And then keep your forehead down. I'm going to keep my forehead lifted so that you can hear me. But you'll keep your forehead down. Lift your arms up and away from the floor. And then you'll circle them, reaching them out to the sides, super slowly, overhead, so that you start to notice places where the arm will either dip or it's hard, right? And if there's pain or sensation, then you don't have to move into that range, but to explore it. And then you'll circle the arms back down, lower the hands, and rest for a moment. We'll do that again. Inhale to lift the arms up. And you can take multiple breaths, obviously, as you're moving through this range, and especially how slowly you move through this range. And then slowly circle the arms back down and bring them all the way down to the mat. And then this time, circle the arms up and overhead. So think like Urdhva Hastasana, like you did before. Then bend your elbows like cactus arms. Then pull the elbows down, try to lift the hands up, lift the head and chest up. On your exhalation, come back down, forehead down, arms lift overhead. Circle the arms back down and rest. Press the feet down, inhale, just the arms come up, circle them up into Urdhva Hastasana, then like a pull up, right, you're going to pull the arms down, elbows down by the side waist, inhale, lift the head and chest, then as you exhale, lower the head and chest, bring the arms overhead, forehead down, bring the arms down by your side. Place your palms underneath your shoulders and maybe a little bit out to the side. And as you inhale, roll on up into low cobra or press yourself up into upward facing dog. We're pressing the uh, tops of the feet down, hands, and pulling the chest forward and up. I actually didn't realize this, but if your thighs usually touch the floor to get close to the floor, you lift your feet up and then that doesn't happen. So, fun surprises. Okay, and then as you exhale, lift up and back into downward facing dog. Okay, kind of let your feet a little bit here. Drop one heel down to the floor. Drop the other heel down to the floor. Okay. Then as you inhale, shift forward into plank. Start to lower yourself down into chaturanga. Come into low cobra or upward facing dog. And then exhale up and back into Adho Mukha Shanasana, downward facing dog. Inhale, bend your knees, look forward. Exhale, step walk or hop your feet to your hands. Inhale, lift halfway up, pull your chin slightly down as you reach the top of the head forward. Exhale and down. So you're maintaining that sensation of elongation of the curves as you lift up. So inhale, halfway up, 
And then notice, if you tip your chin to look forward, okay, what happens to the neck? What happens to that curve? Okay, and then bring the chin slightly down, pull the head forward, and then feel the curve of the neck. Much different. On your exhalation, pull. One more like that. Inhale, lift halfway up. Observe. Exhale, fold. Pressing down through your feet. Inhale, reach your arms out to the sides, overhead, forward, Bahastasana. And then exhale, lower your arms back down by your sides for Tadasana. And we'll come into Sane. Inhale, lift your arms overhead, forward, Bahastasana. Exhale, fold forward into Uttanasana, forward bend. Inhale, lift halfway up, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, set back into plank. Lower down to Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, low cobra upward facing dog. Exhale, up and back into Adhukishvanasana, downward facing dog. On the inhale, bend your knees, look forward. Exhale, step up or hop to the top. Inhale, lift halfway up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, lift your arms overhead, word Bahastasana. Exhale, lower your arms, Tadasana. Inhale, word Bahastasana. Exhale, fold into Uttanasana. Inhale, lift halfway up, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, step or hop to Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, low cobra up for facing dog. Exhale, up and back into Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. On the inhale, bend your knees, look forward. Exhale, step walk, hop to the top. Inhale, halfway forward. Exhale, pull. Inhale, lift your arms overhead, Word Bahasasana. Exhale, lower your arms down. Inhale, Word Bahasasana. Exhale, fold into Uttanasana. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, step or jump, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, low cobra upward facing dog. Exhale, up and back, Padra Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. You come back to the steadiness of your breath, taking a deep, slow, steady inhalation in through your nose, followed by a long, slow, steady exhalation back out through your nose. Inhale, bend your knees, look forward. Exhale, step walk up to the top. Inhale, halfway forward, Ardha Uttanasana, long neck. Exhale, fold. Inhale, lift your arms overhead, Word Bahasasana. And exhale, lower your arms down by your sides for Tadasana. And you can keep your hands there, bring your hands in front of your heart. And either with the eyes closed, soft and open, become aware of your breath, and become aware of the qualities, right? Do you feel sort of this rajasic quality? So there's this sense of action and movement and wanting to go. Is there sort of this heaviness, sense of dullness? Or do you feel at one with where you're at? And you feel this sense of the body and the mind and the breath all working together as one. Observe. And then release your arms. Yeah. Come to stand the top of your mat with your feet about a full distance apart. Then you'll take your hands, take your hands to the outsides of the thighs as you sit back. And you're press your hands into the thighs, pull the thighs back into the hands. Sit back a little bit more for Utkatasana. 
So you're hinging back at the hips. Think of downward facing dog or Adho Kushwanasana. Pull the front arm slightly in and down as you prepare to bring the arms overhead. And then you'll start with those same actions. Bend the elbows. That's it. And then reach the arms overhead. Bend the elbows like that pull, right? The pull down or pull up. And back up. One more. Reach down. Okay. And now you're going to hug the elbows in. Take the elbows back. Reach the arms back. Okay, and then bend the elbows and straighten the elbows, almost like uh, tricep curls, right? And then reach back, forward, okay, push up to stand, tadasana, palms rotate forward. So do that again. You're going to walk your hands down the outer thighs, bend your knees, sit the crease of the hips back, push the thighs into the hands, hands pull back into the thighs, deepen up the crease of your hips. Pull the front arm slightly down. Then from there, keep them down as you reach the arms overhead. Then turn the palms, bend the elbows, pull the elbows all the way down to the side body, and then reach the arms back up, sit back a little bit more. And then bend the elbows, so there's very rajasic, very lots of activity going on. And then straighten. And then one more. Then pull the elbows down towards the side waist, then you bring the elbows in, palms face in towards each other, elbows straight back, straight in the arms, then the arms, straight in the elbows, bend them, one more, and then as you exhale, full forward over the legs. And if you want anything to come underneath your hands, so I just have my bolster here, you can take a chair or your blocks, or the floor, whatever it may be. Again, bend the knees, sink the hips back. Step your right foot back. And step into that lunge. Press back through your right heel. Left leg is pushing out to the left. Start to peel yourself up. Inhale, lift the arms overhead. Same movement, bend the elbows, okay? And then reach the arms back up and overhead. Bend the left knee a little bit and reach back through your right heel. Bend the elbows, pull them down by the side waist and back up. And then one more, pull the elbows down by the side waist. Then from here, hinge forward, bring the palms closer to each other. Pull the elbows up and then reach the elbows back. Bend the elbows, straighten the arms. One more time, bend the left knee, press back through the right heel as you straighten, and then lower the hands, step the right foot forward. And you totally could do this with weights. Like if you wanted to repeat these motions, grab some weights and you do the same thing. Inhale, bend the knees, look forward, hips back as your knees bend, step your left foot back, bend into the right leg, okay? Curl the body up. Inhale, lift your arms up. Okay, front ribs pull down, bend the elbows, pull them down towards the side ribs, and then back up. Okay, and you'll do that two more times. Sort of have the hands moving back, so there's a little more external rotation of the upper arms as you pull down. Okay, the next time the elbows come down, bring the palms in, tip forward, bend the right knee a little bit more, Hide the elbows up towards the ceiling and then straighten the arms. Keep the level of your upper arm so that doesn't lower as you bend your elbows. And then straighten. And bend. Straighten. And then release your hands down. Step your left foot forward. Release over the legs. Okay, inhale. Bend your knees, look forward. As you exhale, step the right foot back. Bend your left knee. Inhale, sweep the arms overhead, link the thumbs so your hands are facing forward, and side bend a little bit over to the left. And if that's intense for the shoulders at the top, then have the hands separated as you side bend. You could also drop the right knee down to the floor. Inhale, back up your center, lower your hands, set the right foot forward. Bend the knees, hips back, left foot back, bend into the right leg as you sweep 
the arms overhead, interlace your thumbs. Inhale, lift up, push it to the wall of the left foot as you lift your back ribs up. And then exhale, side bend over to the right. Keep pressing the left ball of the foot into the floor as you side bend. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, lower the hands down and step your left foot forward. Okay, so if you're moving or if you're using blocks or chair or bolster, you can move that aside and step back into downward facing dog. Okay, press down through the hands, lift up and back through the pelvis. Inhale, shift forward into plank. Exhale, lower yourself down to the ground. Point your toes, okay, and straighten your arms down by your sides. As you inhale, lift up into Shalabhasana. Lift your legs, hands, chest, and head away from the floor. On your exhalation, lower back down. And then we're going to come into those same arm movements. So inhale, rise up. Okay, sweep the arms overhead like Urdhva Hastasana. Then bend the elbows, pull the elbows in, lift the upper arms up, straighten the elbows behind you, bend the elbows, bring the elbows out in front, bring the arms out to the sides, reach them over the head, circle them down, lower all the way down. Okay, we'll do that one more time. So you're breathing throughout the whole sequence. It's not one breath and all these arm movements, but fluidly breathing throughout the entire sequence. Okay? Inhale, rise up. Bring the arms overhead. Pull the arms down. Draw the elbows in. Upper arms back. Reach the hands back. Then bend the elbows. Bring them out in front. Elbows out to the sides, pull them overhead, circle the arms down, lower yourself down. Take both of your hands, place them underneath your forehead for the moment. Breathe into the back of your body. And bend your right knee, reach back, grab a hold of the right foot. Okay, so you can draw the heel down towards in the direction of your right buttock. Can you press your pinky toe and the pinky toe side of the foot into the palm of your hand? And then release the right foot down, switch sides. Draw the left heel down. Then press the pinky toe and the pinky toe side of the foot into the palm of your hand. And then lower your left foot down. Take your hands underneath your shoulders. Press yourself up sort of into that modified, or into that half plate rather. And then step your knees forward. Find tabletop. So you're pressing the tops of your feet down into the floor. If the tops of the feet don't come down into the floor, then use your blanket to support the tops of your feet. And then walk your hands back. Walk the hands up your thighs. Take your hands to the sides of your pelvis and then press the buttocks forward, okay? So think of the tops of the thighs being really long as you press the thighs forward. Then you're gonna pull the elbows back as you were doing before. Arch back, okay? Start to point your fingertips up towards the ceiling, okay? So you're like cow pose. Hug the elbows in, fingertips back. And then from there, draw the upper arms back a little bit more if you can. Then start to straighten your arms and then bend the elbows. Straighten the arms and bend the elbows. Can you feel the shoulder blades supporting the upper back? Straighten the arms, bend the elbows, and then hug the elbows into the sides of the body as you bring the torso upright and sit back. Okay? So that can be the first version. The next version. Is if you have your blocks, okay, 
take your blocks to about mid shin. They can be back by the ankles, but I find that the mid shin works really well for most. Okay. And you can come back up into that kneeling position. So this hand, the knees are about hip bone distance apart. So they're not all the way in towards each other. Make space there. Press the tops of the feet down, whether that's in the blanket or on the floor. And then this time you're going to inhale, lift the arms overhead. So you get nice and long along the curvature of the spine. The front ribs come down just for now. Eventually they will come away from the ribs. But draw the ribs down as you reach the arms up. Then you're going to pull down so you're making their, uh, you're creating activity in the upper back. Keep that activity in the upper back. Now do your cow back. Press the pelvis forward. Then straighten the arms down by your side. And maybe the blocks are there. Okay? And then you can push down into the blocks and lift the chest, lift the throat a little bit, the head. And the head might come back. Give me a mouth. Then from there, hug the arms into the sides of the body as you pull the elbows in. Inhale, come up. Bring the arms overhead, elongate the body, and elongate the spine. And then as you exhale, sit back. So you're gonna repeat that again. If you choose, you can repeat that first version or the tricep movement. Otherwise, this lat pull down. Okay? So you're gonna inhale up. Move into the arm position of your choice, and then start to approach and work on the pose, feeling your way through, right? So not like that rajasic, like, oh, I gotta get my hands somewhere, and not sort of like, okay, doing this, right? So what does that sattvic do for you? How do you work in your body, at your pace, and really feeling, embodying what it is that you're doing? And then whenever you get to wherever you are, take a few breaths in that position. And then as you're ready, press down through the feet, come on up. And then lower yourself back down to sit on your heels. If that's uncomfortable, you can sit in a different position. Take your palms, rest them down on the tops of your thighs, and close your eyes. So imagine you have the blanket still along the spine, but this time the tailbone is rooting down between your heels. And then the elongation of the curves is moving vertically towards the ceiling. as you feel your breath expand in all directions. And then notice the quality of the aftermath. So after your back bends, what state does it put you in? Does it put you in sort of this hyperdrive, accelerated state? Does it put you in a tired state? Or do you feel at what? In harmony? And it will truly be different for each and every individual. And it will be different after every bath bend. It will be different after every practice. And so that's where there's worth and value in slowing down and actually seeing what is happening after we do something in our body to that extent, right, to that extreme. Okay, and as you're ready, open the eyes, make your way down onto your mat. Bring the arms out to the sides to a T, or you can come back to the cactus arms. Move the legs, the feet up to the sides of your mat, and a little windshield wipering of the legs from side to side. And if you want to get the head involved, take the head to the opposite direction as your legs.
and return to center when you're ready, walking your feet back towards center. Take your hands down to your hips. Press your hips down a little bit so that the lower back does flatten just a little bit against the mat. And draw your right knee in towards your chest without your hips lifting away from the floor. So you're pressing down to sort of help the hips stay in place. And draw the right knee in, the right thigh in, just as much as the hip flexion allows without kicking the right side of your hip away from the floor. And then lower the right knee down. You switch sides, press the pelvis down, lift the left thigh up, keep pressing the hips down, Maybe assist the leg to draw it in just a little bit more, but without closing the space between your ribs and the hips. And then lower your left foot back down to the floor. And here, okay, draw both knees in. Now the lower back is pressing against the floor. That space between the ribs and the hips is more condensed. And you roll a little bit from side to side. And then if you'd like to go into the happy baby, step into happy baby, placing your hands on the outer feet. And then return to center. Place the soles of your feet down onto the floor and reach your legs forward, making your way into Shavasana. You can use any props you'd like for your practice of Shavasana. And then anything that you're not using but that you feel is close to you, shift that out of your way so that it doesn't interrupt you as you settle into your practice of Shavasana. 